Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background or whatever interests you. And today I have decided to take you with me to one of the abandoned factories, sewing factory, that was working in Lodzk back in Soviet uh, times. I thought that my grandma, who was a professional embroiderist, uh, worked here, but later I found out she didn't. And this is a very abandoned industrial location that uh, can tell a lot about like um, the Soviet period. And we have come here with a professional operator to look at some locations that we might use for one of my future projects that I want to launch. One thing you don't know about me is that I like weird places and if I were a tourist like somewhere abroad I would definitely like seeing something unusual and today we have come to a very interesting place to an abandoned building that now is used by many creative people for their studios filming and so on and we analyzed this place for one of the projects that I want to launch because of the inspiration that you give me and coffees that you buy me. A more serious one, I will continue with the vlogs, but maybe it'll be weekly or once in two weeks, I want to update you with some other things and I will introduce you later, maybe on our question and answer session this Sunday. But this building is a former building of uh, the sewing factory and it was pretty active back in the Soviet times and for me it looks very, very, very Soviet. It won't be a funny joke taking into account that Ukraine is at war, but it does look as if uh, uh, war happened here. And I will show you maybe about a little bit of the corridors and how it looks. It's perfect for uh, depressive horror movies. I have to imagine myself Lars von Trier or someone like that filming a horror movie in an abandoned sewing factory. I wonder, are there any ghosts <laughs> of workers? But anyway, it looks interesting and I do think that such uh, places have the potential to be interesting public places. And there are lots of abandoned things and let's go out in the corridor that looks also very very like deadly soviet and once again i'm telling you war did not take place here but it does look like that i do think that many places in russia especially in those small cities uh they do look like that that's why they often joke that they don't even need war to look that way. So this is a typical Sovok construction. The way it was very popular, very honorable to work on various plants and factories back in uh, Sovok times and many people who were working on some intellectual professions like doctors, like teachers, they received let's say 90 ruble salary and those who worked in the plants and factories would receive like 400 or something and intellectual work was not much respected and I think this is one of the phenomena of the USSR and now we have a very rainy day with thunderstorms uh, but I will show you why have we come here with an operator because we're looking at one studio that we can use for our project so here it is and Sasha is working hard. Hello, Sasha. Hello, everybody. <laughs> these are, this is me. And these are various things that can be used for, like, I don't know, photo sessions, video sessions. And I do think that this construction, this building is pretty, pretty interesting. And now, even the floor. Um, if you like this loft of design and so on. And here is a Soviet television set. It's dusty. 
I did not have time to clean it and I'm not sure I will but maybe it's interesting for you to have a look at this buttons and you see I don't know why did they name this button orchestra speech and music so perhaps you have a separate button for orchestra and this is perhaps a radio with the not with the numbers that you use for radio stations but with the nine with the names of the cities in Russian and here we have Lviv Krakow, Kiev, Moscow, Bucharest, Stockholm, and all of that, and a television set. The guys told me it still works. <laughs> Maybe we will check it. And you know, carpets, they were also very, very popular back in the times. Oh yeah, maybe we will try to turn it on. And the works of Nabokov. And I do like the view from here because the roofs and you can see some city. I don't know. How do you feel about that? But just like it's very rainy here, but it seems like it is okay for us. And the skull of a Moscovite. Ah, excuse me for the sound. But anyway, this is just a very short excursion on the location that we want to try for something I will introduce you to later. To tell you the truth, I believe there were lots of such abandoned places all over Ukraine because after, uh, at the end of the Soviet Union, it was a very serious uh, economical crisis that led to uh, actually to the fall of the Soviet Union. It was not the revolution, not the rebellious movement that led to it. And we often say in Ukraine now that this is our war for independence. And there are lots of, there were lots of such buildings and I can only imagine how many new destroyed buildings, infrastructure objects are all over Ukraine and especially in the East, in the South, where active uh, war actions take place. And uh, to tell you the truth, whenever I get in a place like that, I start thinking about those people who lost their homes, who lost their jobs, about this uh, various cultural heritage objects that I want to speak about in my future vlogs that were destroyed by Russian orcs, and how difficult it will be to rebuild Ukraine. I know you ask me questions often that whether uh, there is a plan how to rebuild Ukraine, of course, there are many and uh, various uh, like politicians, professionals, economists offer all of that. But still, we are very far away from the end of the war. It continues and it's extremely important to support <coughs> Ukrainian armed forces and people in our fight against Russia because Russia is a global evil. It's no more a problem of Ukraine, it's a problem of the democratic civilized world. And I do wish the time when the plans for rebuilding and reconstruction become reality. But right now we cannot plan seriously because we don't know the level of destructions that Russian works continue doing and destroying in Ukraine. So uh, perhaps this is all that I wanted to show you today and on our question and answer session on Sunday. Perhaps, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I will introduce you more to uh, the project that we want to try and hopefully you will support me on that way. Thank you once again for watching. Thank you for becoming my patrons, buying me coffee and thank you for your subscriptions. They mean very much to me as I believe the world needs to know more about Ukraine and real life situation in my country as this war continues. We will win, we must win and thank you for the support world. Slavo Ukraini!